This is a Highlander map guide for the map Koth Asheville. This guide is aimed at players and teams who want a basic outline of how to play the map. I will first go over some basic tips for Asheville, and then I will talk about the mid-fights, holding the point, and pushing the point. First off, I'll give some basic tips so any team can get the gist of how to be successful on Asheville. The foremost thing you want to keep in mind is trying to always have your flank or your demo or even your NG trying to control the high ground by point as you can do much more damage without receiving as much damage and you're in a better position to go for flank plays, pick off people who are isolated and all around do way more with each life. Another thing to work on is trying to have your flank when they do go behind try to work with your combo and sync up their pushes so you can really get a pinch on the enemy team whether it's only your flank causing a distraction and instantly dying that'll at least open it up for your combo to push in and take point so all in all that coordination can be very very powerful on this map another thing on the receiving end of flanks usually teams fall into the trap of trying to stop the flanks from coming in and they sort of split up their team across the map that just makes them easier to pick off and so from my experience the best way to defend against flanks is to just keep track of where the enemy players are behind you and just be blobbed up so that when the soldier or scout does come in you're able to get the kill quickly and easily and then re-fight with the player advantage another thing to think about is during uber exchanges whether they're on point or near point is if you're a flight class or you have mobility to get out of the way of the fight you can oftentimes do that and then when the ubers are fading just rebomb or re-push back to point and do a bunch of damage essentially if you can pull those things off it'll set your team up to do much better on this map For the mid fight on Koth Asheville, there are two mids I'd recommend. The first one is to roll out Shutter with essentially your entire team and just sort of play by point and on the left side. I'd recommend this mid for teams who are playing a team with weaker DM than themselves, or if your sniper is especially good, or if your flank is especially good. A big way to use your flank to your advantage on this mid is to have them take the high ground and to either push onto their bats and kill any straggling players who might be there, or to have them flank around and shoot that other team in the back if they're playing by shutter, or all the way to the right side if they're on the right. Additionally, they can just play high ground and spam down across the point and pick off anyone who's overextending. Having your sniper playing by barrels on this mid is usually pretty solid, as you can see almost anywhere on point that you want to, and anybody who's pushing can be body shot or headshot. Additionally, the majority of your team should be just sort of blobbed together here, absorbing players who are overextending into you, and just sort of pushing across and taking the fight to the other team. If the other team is playing on bats, you usually want to take it slow and edge the cap, and not really overcommit and bleed players, as they're set up in a more passive spot where they're likely not going to lose players, and so if you're overly aggressive, you'll just lose the mid. Additionally, if the other team is on the ground, you want to try to coordinate your flank and your combo to pressure them at the same time and work down any kills that you can in the meantime. And the third mid that you're likely to encounter is the other team going lower. If that happens, you're going to want to just cap the point for free as the majority of their team is under the point. And you'll have your soldier, your demo, and your sniper focus on locking them down at this choke point. And the biggest thing to remember is not to actually go forward and engage them directly, but to find them at range so you don't actually put yourself at a risk of dying. Overall, this mid is good for teams who want to be aggressive or have solid DM to back up their aggressive plays. And so it's worth trying out even if you have weaker DM, as coordinating with your flank can oftentimes put so much pressure on the combo at once that you'll be able to win regardless of a DM disadvantage. The second mid fight I'd recommend for Asheville is to roll out with almost your entire team on battlements. This mid sets you up in a defensive position where you're unlikely to lose your mid or a bunch of players, and so if you do end up giving up the cap, you'll be able to re-push pretty quickly. This mid is slightly worse than rolling on the ground if you run into the team who's lower, as here you'll actually be able to take direct spam from them. But overall, this mid is very strong against teams who are 
playing on the ground, or just to sort of mirror it means it was also being passive on their bats. Oftentimes the strengths of this oh, sort of mid-fight are if they're all passive on the right, it allows you to have your soldiers on forward and get a ton of damage and then blog up on the right. And while your soldier does that, both doing damaging and distracting, the rest of your team can drop down and push across point and pinch them in this back corner. Another thing to keep in mind, the reason why to have this hold, is if their flank is very aggressively pushing the flank right here, or very aggressively pushing the left and going behind. Because blobbing up here on the high ground, it allows you to absorb their flank if they're pushing too fast and trying to fight you 2v9 or whatever from the left side, or if they just come to a fight, they'll be feeding directly into your wall of players. Another strength of this hold is if they're getting aggressive on point, it allows you to use pretty much all your classes just spam down their demo or anything else that's getting too aggressive. Overall, this mid would be a good thing to try is if your team has slightly worse DM than your opponent, or if you just want to have a solid mid to fall back on where it's fairly straightforward and there's not a whole lot of risk involved, and so you'll be able to be on even footing for the post mid fight if you end up losing. When holding Astral, there's usually one main hold that you'll see teams doing. This is to have pretty much everybody sort of blobbed up on the left side and sort of focused on controlling this high ground here and being focused on the point itself. Usually you'll have your soldier getting buffs and rotating between this roof to spam their team on bats and to just bomb around and try to harass the sniper when he's making himself open to be picked. For example, if the sniper's alone on that right, that can be pretty bad for your team trying to hold, but just having your soldier buff to be able to take him out is very important. Additionally, it's very strong to have your scout top left, as that'll help your scout avoid damage and still be in a position where if they're below point, you can just jump on their heads, or if they drop down and leave a player stranded on bats, the scout can go in for an easy kill there. Additionally, the scout top left is more protection for your combo in case they decide to bomb over. Usually you'll have your heavy, your medic, your pyro, and your demo all sort of blobbed up around in this area, with your MG, soldier, and scout sort of rotating around on the roofs. Oftentimes you'll have your sniper by barrels or more back in the corner if they're trying to pressure point pretty aggressively and he's back enough for spam. The main thing to keep in mind when holding here is to watch out for people suiciding high over this roof and to make sure you're controlling the high ground with your flank and your heavy and pyro are very aware of both people bombing over and their flank coming from behind as well as spies coming from behind and another really common decoy spot is this corner. Oftentimes spies will also just come on through shutter, which can be very hard to stop. Usually the way you hold the point itself is having your demo being tanked and getting the heals and sort of spamming the bats, spamming the shutter or the corner, wherever they happen to be pushing. And then in addition to your demo spam, your sniper holding down these long angles, and then your flank being in a very strong position to spam straight down on the enemy team, or just to spam bats. Another thing you can try is having your demo come up onto the roof as well, as you can do an insane amount of damage on the people who are sort of pumped up on their bats, or just be on the high ground avoiding spam damage in order to shoot down on people. Usually the key to this is to make sure you're keeping your meta alive so you'll always have uber when they're pushing or at least have uber advantage. Most teams will try to just come from their bats and push up close on this wall. And so having your heavy buffed and able to peek this corner to shut that down is very good as well. And one thing to keep in mind when you're holding here, you don't really need to be overcoming the peak unless you're getting on the point and getting cap time, as then you know that they're most likely just passive on this side, still not actually pushing up. In addition to that, when you kill your the enemy sniper, you should feel free to have most of your team sort of fan out and be more aggressively peeking the shutter on the right side than that. This sort of deviation between being passive the blob and then being more forward and able to dish out spam and do damage will make it a little bit less obvious that you're just sort of blobbing here and it'll set you up for pushing back whatever setup they have going. 
in general, as long as you keep the high ground locked down and your bed protected, this hold will be very strong for your team. One other hold worth considering is that if you have uber advantage, it can be strong to have your combo slide underneath as your med will be very safe down here from bombers and spies and whatever is trying to go for a force. And when you have advantage down here, you're able to sort of contest slightly and you're sort of pushing for bats. Or if they come out onto point and start capping, you're able to just come up behind them and uber onto them. This can be very good if you have a time advantage and you know they're going to be rushing to point and you just want to come in behind and kill everyone who's trying to uber in but it's a pretty situational hold and I would overall just recommend playing on the left more. The last topic I'll discuss for holds is how to forward hold effectively. This map is pretty poor for forward holding so keep that in mind. Oftentimes the best one is to just push up into the right here and sort of clear out the telly or whatever that is and the dispenser if it's set up and just sort of push them back so they can't get back to point very easily. Oftentimes you'll want to have your sniper with you so you can stare down these very long sight lines and also protect you from their sniper. But this can be a decent place to push up to and just sort of not overcommit past the stairs really so you can back out if they push up left and so you can just sort of spam down those two long sight lines and slow them down. Doing a quick little forward hold like this and being Having the plan, rather, to just instantly back up once they really start pressuring you will allow you to just buy 10 to 15 seconds of extra point time that they spend pushing up. Another option that is not as good, but can work in a similar effect of just buying a little bit of time, is to have your team come up onto their bats. Usually it's best to come to the shutter, because that's the fastest, and to just sort of keep the spam luck down of the small choke here and having people also watching these sides. The biggest thing to keep in mind when you're on left here is to not overstay your welcome as it's a little bit harder to back out as you have to drop down and there might be people blinking through lower or as you're leaving you might get rushed down by shutter. So usually on the right side it's a little safer but the bats you can sort of lock down more. But overall you only want to stay for a little bit, slow them down and then back up make sure you can get your hold reset and just use these as sort of little things to switch up your hold and buy a little bit of extra time. For pushing the point on Asheville, the most common hold you're going to run into is the enemy team's going to be holding on the right and passing on their side, similar to what I talked about in the hold section of the video. but. The most reliable way to break this hold, whether it's just to get a force or it's to actually commit to a push, is to have your soldier follow up and spam into their combo, or just fully commit into their combo, and that'll serve as a better distraction, but oftentimes you'll, you'll almost always end up dying for it. Another option is to just stand on this here and spam down. It's easier to do with the original, so keep that in mind, but this is essentially the same effect getting damage into their combo and distracting as it is to commit. So that's an option to keep yourself alive. And while the soldier's doing that, you can additionally have your demo bomb with the soldier to get extra damage on that sort of aggressive bomb. Or you can have the demo come with the rest of your team and have them drop down off a of bat and just walk forward and push right into their combo and sort of pinch them in this corner. And if you get used to timing that with your soldier, and maybe the spy deploy behind the combo, then you can have a really effective push. Another way to push the point is that works the best if your enemy team is holding lower, is to simply come out of shutter or out of left and just walk to the point and start getting cap time. And if they have Uber, they have to come out and pop pretty early in the choke point, at which point you can just jump away, keep your health from being on the high ground and then not have to deal with them during the uber itself and then come back in for the super fight and clean up their team on point. That's a big thing to keep in mind whenever you're pushing or holding is just being, making sure that your flank especially is controlling the high ground. And then one more push to consider is if they're holding passively on their bats or if they're just sort of holding under bats 
or if you just want to sort of flank them lower as a flank class, um, simply pushing up here, whether it's with your combo behind you, or just alone as your combo pushes out shutting from the right, you can come up top and just either spam down and be able to below you, or you can just drop down and come for a quick flank and get onto the med pretty easily that way. That's usually the best way to get a surprise color med if they're holding lower. As you can see, there's multiple ways to deal with the lower hold, so I am not a big fan of it. And additionally, if they're just going past the left, you can have your soldier bow up, spin them out over here, while the rest of your team sort of floods on the point and starts edging the cap, but at the same time making sure not to overextend. Additionally, if they're holding lower and you're sort of pushing out on the left, the thing we try to do is kill any flank punches that might be on mats or on point, as they'll be isolated and they won't have teammates or heals to sort of back them up if you push them. So you can generally get a few picks if you go quickly to point, but in general, those are the best ways to push the point on Asheville. It just comes down to being aggressive, moving forward together, and not going in one by one, and you should have a fairly straightforward time breaking the holds.